the shadow and let's look at the passives that I am using. Uh, refreshing shadows is one that I'm using, and this is just this is just an obvious one to get. It passively gives you increased stamina, health, and magicka recovery by 15%. This is definitely needed because you will be using a lot of stamina. And as a vampire and as a night blade, you have you have lower life and you're more susceptible to that fire damage, that DOT. So having the health recovery is pretty essential to this build because um, if you get bursted by someone, you need to be able to use your abilities like Dark Cloak to get out of that, get rid of the DOTs, and then start to recover that life. You cannot rely on pots with a Night, night Blade Vampire uh, setup. You just can't do it. Uh, I don't even really use my pots that much because of the way that the character's set up. It's really not that helpful. Um, I, I tend to stick with the uh, stamina pots. I don't use health pots really. I just use stamina pots so that I can continue to dish out the damage. So I also use shadow barrier, and this is also a really good one. Uh, because you have the dark cloak and you have the ambush, and you're going to be going into um, your shadow abilities and whatnot, um, this is really nice. because. Uh, you can also incorporate some of these other ones like Veiled Strike, Path of Darkness, Summon Shade, like some, and Bolstering Darkness is also really good. I mentioned that earlier, but if you don't have Devouring Swarm because you're still leveling up, uh, getting Bolstering Darkness is a, a really good substitute for the Devouring Swarm because this allows you to create a ring around you, which gives you major protection, which reduces damage to you by 60%, and if you get the proper upgrade, then your allies also get 30% and it reduces enemy movement within the circle. So you can move around in the circle and dodge the enemy's attacks and you can get in there and do a lot of stuff while taking almost no damage. So this is uh, really nice. It also heals um, your allies, uh, which can be very helpful for if you're doing some iffy content with some of your allies and you're leveling up and they're not geared very well and you get into a trouble point where there's lots of guys attacking you, you think your teammates are going to die, you throw down a bolster in darkness and that just completely mitigates everything. Heals them up, reduces their damage, and it's just all good. So this is nice. Um, so you activate shadow ability on uh, shadow barrier and increases your magic resolve, and, uh, or major resolve, major ward, which gives you uh, increased physical resistance and spell resistance by about 4,000. So that's really nice. And the dur duration is increased for each piece of heavy armor. So I'll talk a little bit more about my gear later on, but I'm using a mix of medium armor and heavy armor so that I can get certain bonuses from the shadow abilities and still get the bonuses from the medium armor uh, skill tree. Uh, I don't have dark vigor. And the reason I didn't get Dark Vigor is because uh, with this weapon set, I only have one shadow ability. And if I uh, swapped out Devouring Swarm for Bolstering Darkness, then I would only have two. Um, maybe when you level up later on and you get into the higher veteran levels, this would be good to actually fill this in with um, additional points so that you get the plus, uh, plus two. I do believe, though, that... Um, on level 1, you get 2%, but on level 2, you only get 3% for each shadow ability. So it does kind of have a diminishing return effect for that second point. So maybe it would be just better to just have the one point and just use your shadow abilities. Um, for Dark Veil, it's sort of the same thing. It has a diminishing return effect, so I only got one point. And this just increases the duration of your shadow abilities by 8%. So I decided that um, I'm just going to put one point in that. Uh, as for the siphoning skill tree, I do have the Malphitic Reef here. Um, that's the only siphoning ability I use. And I also use this passive here. So after drinking a potion, you gain 12% ultimate. This is just a no-brainer because um, you have the potions. They're pretty much free to use. You don't really need the health potions like I was saying earlier. So you just keep popping your stamina potion every time you need it, every time it's available and just uh, pump up your Devouring Swarm or get yourself going on the uh, the uh, Soul Harvest. Maybe you need the Soul Harvest or you know maybe you're low on life and you need the Devouring Swarm and you're really close then you just use a potion and get an additional 12 ultimate points. So those are the, um, the class skills and so I'm gonna go into the dual wield here. 
for the dual wield, like I said, I have the Blood Craze, the Blinding Fury, and the Whirlwind. Um, those are all equipped to the weapon sets. For the passives, I got every single passive uh, for the dual wield. Since I'm using uh, dual daggers on both uh, weapon sets, I figured I might as well just, you know, fill these out. So for slaughter, um, increase damage with dual weapon abilities by 20% against enemies under 25%. This is really good, especially when you couple it with the uh, Blinding Fury, because the Blinding Fury has the, um, the high damage on the last hit. On the sixth hit, it does about 1,700. So if you activate your Blinding Fury at the right time and you get them below 25% health, then the Blinding Fury does a lot of damage. And that's uh, pretty nice. Uh, Dual Wield Expert, this increases your weapon damage on your offhand. Uh, you get about 3% per point, so I went with both points, I got 6%. Uh, controlled Fury, this one is kind of key. It reduces the cost of dual wield abilities by 20%. Uh, since your dual wield abilities cost stamina, you're going to want to actually get the Controlled Fury because it allows you to just continually dish out that damage and not run out of that stamina as fast. Um, Ruffian, this gives you 15% damage bonus when attacking a stunned, immobilized, disoriented, or silenced enemy. Uh, you're not doing a lot of uh, silencing and disorienting. Uh, you do have the ability to stun and immobilize on a couple of your skills. But this is mostly good just because when you're working within a group, doing your dailies and doing dungeons and stuff like that, they're going to be stunning and immobilizing and doing all that stuff, and that allows you to then come in as the damage um, and just get that extra 15%. So it's not really for you. It's really more to synergize with your team. Um, so, you know, when you're in the fight, sure, you want to be attacking certain characters, but as a Nightblade vampire with the dual wield, with the critical strikes. You want to be focusing on people that are crowd controlled, so they're stunned, immobilized, disoriented, or silenced. You want to focus on them first, and you want to focus on the people that have low life because you have the, uh, the slaughter ability. So with the high critical strike and with all these damage buffs in the, um, in the build, when the people are on, a, on low life, if they're below 50% or they're, you know, 25% or lower, you need to be focusing on them because you can kill them so much faster than anyone else just from all these bonuses. Uh, the last one I got was Twin Blade and Blunt, and this gives you different abilities based on what kind of um, weapons you're using. So um, axes give you a chance to bleed, maces give you, uh, it ignores armor. So you get an armor reduction uh, skill. Uh, swords give you more damage. And then each dagger increases your weapon critical rating uh, by about 810. So this is really nice. Um, just because if you can't find yourself a good dagger, um, then adding an axe, which gives you bleed chance, is good. It may not have as much damage and critical as a dagger would have. But having an axe and a dagger is pretty good because you get that bleed chance. Or if you have a mace with the armor reduction, that's also nice. So because you're using two weapon sets, you can have your first weapon set be your high damage daggers for your high damage weapon set. And then when you're in sort of that um, utility uh, weapon set, the second one, then you can use maybe a, a mace with a dagger, an axe with a dagger, axe and mace, and get additional bonuses from this passive. So this is kind of nice. Uh, right now I have uh, dual daggers on both of my uh, sets just so that I can get that high critical no matter what I'm doing. So that's the weapon skills. We'll jump briefly into the armor skills. I have nothing in the light armor. For medium armor, I have uh, dexterity maxed out. This increases your critical strike rating for each piece of medium armor equipped. My current bonus is about 1,000. So this is for one or more pieces, so you need at least one piece for this to activate. Uh, this is just a no-brainer. You're going to be using a lot of medium armor, so you want to max that. Uh, Wind, Windwalker, this increases your stamina recover, recovery by 4% per medium armor, and it also reduces the stamina cost of abilities by 3% per piece of medium armor. So you want to use uh, this because you're going to be using about four pieces of medium armor, I would say, uh, maybe five. Uh, let's see here. When a medium armor set of five or more pieces is equipped, it increases your weapon damage by 12%. This is agility. I have two points in this. So I have five pieces of medium armor. 
uh, so that I get this bonus here. And this is nice just to increase your flat damage because with critical strike, you don't want to have low base damage with high crit. It doesn't work that well. You want to try to boost up your flat damage and then get high crit as well. So anything that is going to passively boost your weapon damage and you don't have to worry about it is going to be nice. And so I got went ahead and got that. Uh, athletics, I have two points in this. With one or more pieces of medium armor equipped, it increases your movement speed while sprinting and reduces the stamina cost of the dodge roll by 4% per medium armor. This is also just, you know, pretty basic um, common sense kind of piece. Uh, you want to be able to move faster as a as a low life, high damage character. You want to be able to get in and get out. So get in, do your damage. If you're starting to take a lot of damage or something happens, you want to be able to use your dark cloak and get out of there. Or use your ambush and attack someone in the distance and get out of there. So these are kind of nice. Uh, let's go to heavy armor. So for the heavy armor, the only one that I got was constitution. Uh, with one or more pieces of heavy armor, this increases your health recovery by 4% per piece of health uh, heavy armor. So I get about 12%. So that means I have three heavy pieces of armor and five pieces of um, medium armor. It also restores magicka and stamina each time you are hit, but only once every four seconds. Um, this is kind of nice because um, as a uh, Nightblade and Vampire and Shadow and all that stuff, uh, you do have an occasional skill that gives you dodge chance, like uh, you have your Mirage skill here that gives you dodge chance. So if you're in trouble, you can use Mirage to reduce the amount of incoming attacks. And if you do get attacked, it will restore your Magicka and Stamina every four seconds, as well as increase your health recovery. So this, this Constitution uh, passive is pretty nice uh, to have. Okay, so let's look at... Soul magic, I don't have anything. I don't have any ledger, ledgerman um, skill points. I, I did start out when I first was level one. I started out by using a lot of light fingers and using some trafficking um, skills because that allows you to just get a lot of gold pretty quick because you can just go around stealing stuff. Like, not necessarily stealing high gold value items, but you can steal a lot of ingredients to make potions and stuff like that. And so instead of buying ingredients or finding them on the ground somewhere, you can just steal them. And that works a lot better. Um, the key is to not get caught because you lose a lot of money that way. So now we're in the uh, vampire skill tree. And the reason I chose to go vampire is because the vampire has a lot of passes that synergize very well with the, um, the Nightblade. Because the Nightblade doesn't have a lot of, it doesn't have high max health. It has a lot of high uh, health recovery and a lot of like uh, passives that really help it, like the Mirage skill with the dodge chance or the Dark Cloak that removes DOTs and allows you to become invisible. So you're sort of playing this game where you have really high damage and you get in and then as soon as something happens, you use your skills and you get out and go back into the shadows and you recover and whatnot. And so the Vampire just kind of plays into that ability. Um, so I already explained the Devouring Swarm and I explained the Invigorating Drain earlier, so I'm going to skip those and just go right into the passives. So the first one is Savage Feeding. So after feeding, your target's off balance and stunned for four seconds. So this works very well with like an Invigorating Drain or if you're using the Blood Ritual or, you know, whatever. This works really nice. Um, for Supernatural Recovery, uh, this one is just really nice because, you know, you really need to have a high stamina recovery for this build to work. You'll find that maybe early on you're running out of stamina quite a bit and you're just using basic attacks. Well, uh, Supernatural Recovery works really well with, um, there's another one here, uh, uh, Refreshing Shadows in the Shadow Tree. So this gives, Refreshing Shadows gives you 15% to all recovery and then you go into, uh, your Vampire and Supernatural Recovery gives you 10% additional on Magicka and Stamina. So that works pretty nice, giving you about 25% increased recovery for Stamina and Magicka. Uh, Blood Ritual is just used to convert other people to being a uh, Vampire. You can, you can sell this Bite. You'll see people asking for Vampire Bites or, you know, uh, a lichen bite or whatnot. Uh, you can print, you can, you can sell these if you want, or just give away free bites and make friends. 
Uh, it's kind of cool. You can kind of role play that if you want. Um, so that's that's good. But normally you don't need the blood ritual because it only is active every seven days. So you can use this and then just go to a, a shrine and reset that one skill or you know whatever. If you need to reset anyway, then you just don't you don't get this. And then save a point so that when it's when it's up to be used, you just use your last point and put it into blood ritual kind of thing. Um, the undeath. This is just amazing for night Nightblade. Uh, it reduces the damage dealt to you when you fall below 15% health. Uh, lower health increases the effect, reducing the damage by up to 33%. So when you bec when you're under 50% health, you have a a damage reduction applied to you, and this uh, synergizes with uh, your mirage and with other abilities. Um, so. It's, it's kind of crazy because you don't have a lot of maximum health, but if you're below 50% health, you're taking reduced damage, and then you can couple that with uh, bolstering darkness when you're on lower levels. You can maybe not get Devouring Swarm or maybe not use Soul Harvest and use bolstering darkness. And so then you have a double effect, which stacks. And so when you're on low life, it'll be like they can't even, they can't kill you unless they have high burst damage because they'll do damage to you but the damage reduction is so much that it barely hurts you and then your health recovery is so high that you just kinda you get in this sweet spot where you're getting hit but you're not taking really that much damage and you're recovering that damage so it's just really nice I've, I've seen this effect work really well the only real problem is uh, when you're on a low life you gotta be careful of fire damage because fire damage is it does increase damage against uh, vampires like I've been saying uh, unnatural resistance. This is, reduces the severity of health recovery determin, uh, determinant in the vampire stages two through four. So that's another main thing with being a vampire is you need to feed. You need to keep your vampirism low. Uh, when you're at the higher levels, your health doesn't recover as well. And I do believe you do more damage when you're on the higher levels, but you also take a lot more damage and you don't recover as fast. So usually you want to be on level one or two, I would imagine, to kind of get a kind of maybe two's the sweet spot. But I would I would try to stick to one or two for that. Um, this dark stalker, I didn't really get this. Uh, increases your movement speed while sneaking and allows you to enter stealth more quickly at night. I didn't really think that that was really that that worthwhile, so I didn't get that. Uh, I don't have any skills in Fighter's Guild or Mage Guild or Undaunted. I didn't go into that. And Alliance skills, I don't have any of that either. So let's go to our Khaji uh, Khajiit skills. Uh, I forgot to mention, I'm a Khajiit with uh, Nightblade and Vampire. So I have all those three together because they all synergize very well. Um, sort of forgot to mention the Khajiit part. But you can see I got my tail wagging back here. and So I mean, I'm definitely a cat. Um, but... Uh, the Khajiit has the medium armor expertise, and this increases your experience gain with the medium armor skill line by 15%. Uh, this is good to get early because this just allows you to level up um, your medium armor stuff very quickly. Uh, just by wearing the armor, you'll level up these abilities, and then you'll be able to use them much quicker. So if you're going to be using um, some Khajiit skills early on, you would want to go ahead and get this uh, leveled up. Uh, right away. And then the next one is Robust Constitution. This increases your health recovery by 20% and stamina recovery by 10%. So this also synergizes with the Vampire and the Shadow skills. So before uh, we were talking, we had the Shadow with uh, Refreshing Shadows, which does stealth, or, uh, stamina, health, and Magicka. And then we have the Vampire Supernatural Recovery, which is Magicka and Stamina. And then when we go down to Khajiit, Khajiit gives us health and stamina. So we end up having about 35% additional stamina recovery from all three. And we have about 35 health recovery from all three. And about 25% 20, Magicka recovery. So our Magicka recovery isn't as high, but we're not using as many Magicka skills as we are stamina skills. And health recovery is by far the most important of the three. Uh, stealthy. This reduces your detection radius. I didn't get this. Um, I started off with this skill when I was doing a lot of uh, robbing, a lot of stealing. I started out with stealth just so it, would, it was easier to pickpocket people and 
um, to break into chests that were more difficult. Um, I used this quite a bit, but then I rolled it back and got rid of it. And I basically took those points and put it into Carnage. And in, uh, Carnage increases your weapon critical rating by 8%. And this is for three points, you're getting 8%. That's pretty good. Excuse me. Um, so I, I really like this because, I mean, the whole kind of idea of this build is high critical damage, you know, medium base damage, and then a lot of uh, control factor, a lot of uh, sustainability, a lot of escape. So you're kind of playing this assassin type build, but uh, you also have a lot of uh, survivability through your, vampir your vampirism and your shadow techniques and that kind of stuff. Um, going into crafting, uh, I didn't, I have, you know, I have a lot of stuff in crafting, but that's not really important. Um, the, the one that I chose to go for is the provisioning, because I like making um, different ales and making different drinks and foods and things like that. At the lower levels, I think the food, um, it, it, it helps, but it's not essential. You don't have to have it in order to do, like, the lower level stuff. But when you get into the higher level dungeons and you're doing veteran dungeons, um, having the ability to boost your max health and max magicka and max stamina in different combinations is really nice. And if you want, you can get um, you can get some food or some drink that increases your health recovery by quite a lot, and that really uh, synergizes well with the um, the vampire, um, the undead or undeath. Because um, if you can increase your max health, then it's harder to be below 50% health. But if you incre increase your health recovery, then when you get down below 50% health, like I was saying, and you're in that sweet spot where you're not taking very much damage because of the damage reduction, then that high health recovery um, potion or whatnot, that really, really helps quite a bit. Um, so that's uh, the way my skill setup is. Once again, the crafting one, I would recommend you do provisioning first um, as uh, the one that's going to help you out the most in the late game. So let's go ahead and look 